came to our church. We've been doing really well, and we appreciate him so much. And so, so we would like to present him. This is Noel Gibbs. And enjoy it with your family. Merry Christmas. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Are the waiting ones longing for the day to come when we are no longer waiting on the one who can save us from ourselves waiting with bated breath for hope to reach out its hand from heaven and heal our helpless hearts waiting for a light to spark a light to dawn a light to diffuse the dark we drawn like curtains over our souls waiting for the promise to unfold like a map leading us to the treasure of treasures so we can behold and believe waiting for peace to supersede our anxieties and flow like a river through a dry and weary land where there is no water waiting for the father to see fit to find us in our pit pining in our sin the spiritual slum we lived in but when the fullness of time had come he sent forth his only son, incarnate one, the manifestation of God in the flesh, the epitome of a promise kept. He left heaven's majesty so we no longer have to be waiting. The birth of a baby, a king, come to redeem the world he created. God, born in a borrowed stable, the light of man in a makeshift cradle. This is not a fable. The one who we have waited for is here. Peer into the manger and behold him who welcomes the stranger and breaks the chains of every captive. Our maker, our savior, our master is here, casting our fear into the ocean of his love. Emmanuel, God with us, go shout it on the mountain, cause our waiting is done. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our Christmas Eve service, a festival of lessons and carols. Just a couple things real quickly to get kind of out of the way. In case you were wondering, there is a set of bathrooms right down the hall, just past that. So if you need that at any time tonight, just walk a little bit down towards the hall, and on your left <coughs> will be two bathrooms. Also, you'll notice out there a little table that's bare right now, but by the end of the night, we'll have some goodies for you to take home. Uh, a special gift made by Billy Winsman, a member of our church, called Snowman Soup. And I've been promised it's not melted, just melted ice, because that's not what Snowman Soup is. So there's more there. So that's a goodie for you to take home. Also, make sure you have a candle ready to go for tonight, just like this. If you don't have one, they are on the table as you're entering the sanctuary. They turn on on the bottom there with a switch. So you might test that and make sure those work. I think I hand tested every single one of them, so it should be good. Tonight we will also be take, taking an offering for the LC Valley Youth Resource Center. And later on we'll explain that in a bit, but I just want you to know the offering plate won't be passed, but it will be out there for you to put your offering in and it will go 100% tonight, go to the LC Valley Youth Resource Center. All right, that is it for welcome and announcements. Let us begin our festival of lessons and carols. Come, faithful watchers, and behold, your salvation is here. We have waited and watched, longing for God to show up and save us from the suffering and pain in our world. We have waited and watched, longing for peace to reign among us 
a peace that removes unjust barriers, frees us from sin, and binds us together as neighbors, family, and friends. We have waited and watched, longing for joy that is persistent in the face of grief, lament, chaos, and oppression that weigh on us day in and day out. We have waited and watched, longing to encounter the love that transforms us, the love that is now here among us, first as a babe in a manger, then as a teacher, a friend, and our Savior. lead us into our Advent candle lighting ceremony. Just a quick, quick explanation for the Advent wreath in case you're unfamiliar. The 
season of Advent is four weeks long, comprises four Sundays leading up to Christmas Eve, and we mark the time by lighting a, a new candle every Sunday for the week, beginning with the candle of hope, then peace, then joy, then love. And then tonight, well, tonight we light the Christ candle. stronger than any trial. We proclaim the victory that is stronger than any defeat. We proclaim a peace that is stronger than any conflict. We proclaim a freedom that is stronger than any bondage. Tonight we will light all of the candles. The first candle reminds us that Advent is a time to wait upon the Lord with faithful endurance. The second candle reminds us that Advent is a time to watch for God's presence with hopeful expectation. The third candle reminds us that Advent is a time to prepare for the Lord in heart, soul, and mind. The fourth candle reminds us that the one we wait for, watch for, and prepare for is Jesus Christ, who is Emmanuel meaning God is with us. Tonight, we will light the last candle, the Christ candle. This candle reminds us that we are to proclaim the message of Christmas by celebrating what Christ has done and by sharing it with others. As the light from each candle fills this room, so may the light of Christ fill our world. God in heaven, we thank you for guiding us through our Advent journey. Through waiting, watching, preparing, and praising, we are now ready to proclaim. Help us receive the glory of Christmas as we celebrate and rejoice that you have come to us through the gift of Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. Amen. All right, one of my greatest privileges when we do the Christmas Eve service is picking a local nonprofit to send our offering from tonight's, uh, from the Christmas Eve's offering. And uh, I, I love doing it every year. And this year we've picked the Elsie Valley Youth Resource Center. So I'm going to invite Michelle King to come forward and share with us a little bit about 
the LC Valley Youth Resource Center, their mission and purpose. And thank you so much for being here, Michelle. Thank you all for welcoming me here this evening and Merry Christmas. I brought some cheap notes. <clears throat> um, so I'm kind of an interactive speaker. I hope that's okay. I don't want to violate any culture, but will you raise your hand if you've heard of the Youth Resource Center? Wonderful. I love to see all those hands go up. Thank you all. I, um, for those who don't know what the Youth Resource Center is, um, we are a local nonprofit that serves Lewiston and Clarkston teens ages 12 to 17. We provide an afternoon drop-in center where kids can come get food, take a shower, do their laundry, join us for dinner, get prizes for completing homework, and after dinner we offer up to 16 kids per night a safe place to sleep. Many people in our community don't know, but in the state of Idaho, outside of the Boise area, one in four homeless people is a child. And studies have shown that most chronically homeless adults began their homeless journey as children. So at the Youth Resource Center, we are a sustainable solution to make lifelong change for these kiddos. And it's not as hard as it sounds. It's a bowl of spaghetti. Um, it's clean socks. And yesterday, it was an amazing Christmas party. Um, we got to dance with the kids in the, in the kitchen, little baby shark action, grandma shark. Right, good times, but, um, but that's how you change the world. Um, when we opened the organization, we did it on a shoestring, and so my husband and I moved out of our home and we lived there as the hosts. Um, thankfully, we've grown now to where we actually have a full-time host that lives there and I'm back in my house. <laughs> um, but one of our first Christmases, um, we had a little 12-year-old who was sitting with us on Christmas Eve and we're sitting around the dinner table and there's my whole family there and uh, two homeless kids. And um, this little guy, he's not necessarily homeless, he's just homeless for the night because mom spends a lot of time with her boyfriend and uh, older brother is in charge and older brother's way of dealing with little brother is um, pretty violent. So kiddo spent a lot of time with us. So Christmas Eve he's hanging out with us and we're going around the table and I'm like, hey guys, what does Christmas mean? And the kid's sitting next to him. Well, he says presents, of course, right? Kid sitting next to him goes, no, it's the celebration of the birth of Jesus. And the kid, this little 12-year-old guy, has this light bulb moment where he's like, wait, is that why they call it Christmas? We're like, yeah. And we got to share this, the good news. A week later, um, the 12-year-old's mama died. And he became an orphan. And his only family was out of town. And um, so we wrapped him up in a blankie and hung on tight until family could get here. And we got to walk through the journey of hanging out with the orphan. Um, last time I saw him, he's reached that stage where he had some peach fuzz. Um, we've had 41 moments when a child came to us when they decided between life and suicide. I am thankful to say as hard as those moments are, all 41 times they chose life. So my friends, the LC Valley Youth Resource Center, we celebrate messy miracles. Sometimes it smells like teenage feet, but um, we get to be through the good, the bad, and the baby shark with these kiddos. So thank you for thinking of us tonight and choosing us to be your nonprofit. But more than that, if I could ask, would each of you add us to your prayer list when you're praying, will you pray for our kiddos? Pray for our staff. We have a team of eight amazing people who do life with these kids. And um, none of them are getting rich off of it, so they're doing it because it's a, car a cry of their heart. They could make more money at McDonald's, but they'd rather be with these kids. Um, so far in three years, we've served 450 Lewiston and Clarkston teenagers. So there are a lot of kids out there right now hurting terribly. And... Um, we stand in that gap, so pray as we do it, because it's frontline work. But more baby shark. Merry Christmas, you guys. Thank you.
Let's say a quick prayer for the offering and for the Youth Resource Center, and then we'll sing our offering carol. God, thank you so much for um, the heart of the folks at LC Valley Youth Resource Center. Thank you for their <clears throat> passion, for their compassion, for their attention, their care, their empathy. God, we pray a blessing upon this offering tonight that it might bring healing and wholeness and joy and hope and love and peace. We love you, God, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First lesson, Genesis 1 through 26 and 26 through 38, then chapter 5, 1b and 2. God blesses whole humankind. Then God said, let us make hum humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, be faithful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. When God created mankind, he made them in the likeness of God. Male and female, he created them, and he blessed them and named them humankind when they were created.
Second lesson is Genesis 22, 15 through 18. God promises to bless the world through Abraham. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you and will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies. And by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. The third lesson from Isaiah chapter 9. The prophet announces the coming birth of a king. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
the fourth lesson, Isaiah 11, 1 through 4a and 6 through 9. Christ will bring justice and peace for all generation, for all creation. A shot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch, branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what, what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide what equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Fifth lesson is Luke 1 through 126 through 35 and 38. The Annunciation. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. 
he will be called the Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The sixth lesson, Luke chapter 2. Luke tells of the birth of Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinus was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn.
seventh lesson, Luke 2, 8 through 16. The shepherds go to the manger. In that region, there were shepherds living in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing, this, bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly there were with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. The eighth lesson is Matthew 2, 1 through 12. The wise men are led by the star. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men came from the east and came to Jerusalem, asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah, 
For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, They left for their own country by another road. The ninth lesson, John chapter 1. John unfolds the great mystery of incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth.
on a night just like this, darkness had settled in. The world, weary and ragged, longing for a hint of joy. On a night like this, cold and bleak, two weary travelers huddled together, one carrying within her the hopes and fears of generations. She had heard a messenger, an announcement from God. She would bring a blessing into the world, a king who would reign forever, one who would save his people from oppression, a king who would reign forever, and in the light of day she had said, let it be, because who wouldn't want to say yes to a blessing for the whole world? But on a night like this, on a night just like this, I wonder, did she doubt? Resting on a cold, hard floor, crammed into the only available space in a lowly cattle stall. On a night like this, broken and weary, because the powers that be forced her to travel so she could be counted. So the empire could squeeze just a few more coins, just a bit more out of her family. I wonder if she had second thoughts. On a night like this, on a quiet and cold and dark night just like this, shepherds gazed at a vast sky, stretched out over the earth like, like, Decades, years of silence. And I wonder, did they say any prayers? Did they look up into the sky and speak into the void? The only sound their voices trailing off and disappearing into the deep, dark black of broken hearts and shattered expectations? Or did they even bother with such things anymore? Because maybe they had no expectations at all. No prophets had spoken to them in centuries. No visitations. The leaders, <laughs> corrupt. Doing more harm to the brokenhearted than any good. Why would anything be different on a night like this? What could possibly be different on a night like this? Years of frustration piling one on top of the other. Decades of futility stacked up like an impenetrable wall. Centuries of silence. Doling the ache until there wasn't even an ache anymore. Worse than desperation, indifference. On a night like this, this did they still even believe anymore? Who held on to any hope? Who even longed for an answer? Was there even a soul left that felt anything anymore? Even the pain of separation or a longing for the one who had made the promise in the first place? On a night like this, on a night just like this. It can be easy to let doubt take over when it seems like the answer to your prayers has been not even no, worse than no, just no answer at all. Hope can be easy to put away. On a night like this, in a world where too many rush to conflict as the answer, when wrestling with ourselves seems like the only viable option available, peace gets snuffed out. On a night like this, Sorrow and shame can be too much to bear. And the light of rejoicing can be choked out so easily. On a night like this, when love feels like a trite solution, naive at best and maybe even pointless, when the scars have thickened to the point where no feeling at all is left behind, indifference can swallow up the flame of love in an instant. Maybe it was all a lie. Maybe the light never existed in the first place. 
on a night like this, it's probably just best to keep our heads down and muddle through somehow. Who are we to dream big dreams after all? (laughs) This is just how it is. This is how it always has been. It's probably good that we don't get our hopes up anymore. Maybe we never should have believed in the light anyway. We should just give up on all of that because it's just nonsense. But wait. Listen. Listen. In the middle of the silence, in the middle of a dark night of indifference, in the middle of selfishness and greed, something stirs in Mary. Mary knows. Mary knows it's time. On a night like this, all creation waits to hear what will happen next. All creation has been waiting for a spark of light, for someone like Mary to say yes. Tonight, on this very night, a night just like this, could it be true? Listen. Look. Do you hear it? Can you see it? So small, so tiny, it's like, it's like an infant, like a newborn child. Do you hear it? It's like a baby's first cry. It's like a single small word, vulnerable, but so powerful in the empty silence. Yes, a word. The word. The word spoken before there was time. This word, can you hear it on a night like this? Can you hear it past the doubt that still rings in your ears? Listen, on a night like this, can you hear it with a heart of hope? Because I know it's hard on a night like this. On a night when the rattle and hum of conflict and war rings out against the night sky, can you hear the still small voice of an infant prince of peace? Can you embrace the vulnerability of a newborn child and can you listen with the ears of your broken heart? Because if you listen close enough, I'm sure you can hear it. It sounds like the angels rejoicing on a night like this. After so many nights of indifference, can you trust what your ears are hearing? Because it sure sounds an awful lot like love. Maybe you need to hear like a child can hear it. Maybe it will take becoming, I I don't know, like an infant again to truly hear it. Do you remember when your heart was unscarred and so tender and so open, like a cradle receives a newborn child like a manger on a night like this, ready to receive the light of Christ and then share it with the whole world? Because on a night like this, hope and peace and joy And love are born. The light of Christ breaks forth. The darkness cannot hold it. It can only make it stand out even brighter more. And you, like Mary, can say yes to this light. And like Mary, you can carry it to the world. But you first have to hear it. And you first have to receive it. Like a child. A night like this can be transformed, but only if you see it with the eyes of a child. Only if you hear it, listen, with the ears of a child.
O God of love and light, on this night of introspection on the nature of divine presence, turn us inward to your indwelling spirit. On this night of reflection on the nature of divine power, turn us outward to the needs of this broken but beautiful world. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll have a few more songs here, but let me send you off now. Let me give you a parting blessing that you can take with you after we do our closing songs. Depart in peace and take with you the certain knowledge that God is always coming into the world. May the blessing of Christmas make you a blessing to others. May the peace of the season pervade all that you do.